Hey everyone, my name is Jordan and I am the Director of Education at Nature's Classroom Institute's Environmental Education Program in Texas and California. And this is our first video in our Corona Lesson Series. Um, so being at our site in Loma Mar, California, we are surrounded by these big, beautiful coastal redwoods. So I thought it was very appropriate to start our first video off discussing the layers of a tree. Okay, so we're gonna go over here to this um, redwood that's already been cut down. So a tree is broken down into five layers. So we all know that we can tell the age of a tree based on the layers in the tree. Believe it or not, those layers that tell the age are actually sub layers of a different layer. And we're gonna get into that in just a minute. Um, so we'll start from the outside and go in. So the outside on the very, very edge here, this is what is known as the outer bark. This is the very first protective layer for a tree against any outside elements. Every single year, the outer bark is grown over by another layer of bark and it just continues to lay on top of that year after year, allowing the tree to get bigger and bigger. Um, now just inside, if you wanna get a little closer here, just inside, you can see this layer all behind that outer layer of bark there is what is known as the inner bark. Now, the inner bark is the second protective layer inside of a tree. Um, again, the outer bark goes over top of it, and this kind of protects from beetles or other insects that wanna burrow into the bark and get a little deeper um, to get into the sapwood and stuff. So it helps the tree to prevent from bugs, infestation, or some sort of disease. So it's the second layer of protection for that. Then we move into this big chunk layer right here. So this is what is known as the cambium. Now, this is what I wanna talk about when I get into the sub layers of the tree. So the cambium, is very, very important layer of the tree. It houses what is known as the xylem and the phloem. The xylem and the phloem, in comparison to humans, are sort of like the veins in our body. So the xylem allows the water to get from the roots to the tree and the, and the rest of the leaves based on a property known as capillary action. So capillary action, it, it relies on the a scientific property of water known as surface tension. So surface tension uses hydrogen molecules to bounce back and forth um, inside of a vessel, um, such as a tree or maybe a glass tube in the science class. So when, they, when that surface tension is great on the outside, it creates less surface tension on the inside, which allows the water to travel upward against gravity going into all of the branches and the leaves on the tree. Now the phloem, the phloem breaks down all of the sugars inside of the tree. So for this tree's case, it would be glucose and sucrose. And it breaks all of that down and allows the tree, through, through photosynthesis, and allows the tree to produce its own food. Um, now, if you really wanna get close, it's gonna be kinda hard to see because this tree's been here for a while. But as you can see, you can begin to see tiny little lines inside the cambium. These are how you tell the tree's age, yes, but they are created by the xylem and the phloem. So inside these, there are a dark line and a lighter colored line, as well as some thin lines and some thick lines. These are very good indicators of how the tree was doing year by year. Um, so the dark lines are the wet seasons and the light colored lines are the dry seasons. And the thinness and the thickness of the lines actually corresponds to the amount of rainfall the tree received that year. So it's not an exact science, but it is a very good indicator of the droughts that an area might have undergone during the time that this tree was here. So once we go past the cambium, we got another thin layer. This thin layer here is what is known as the sapwood. So the sapwood in some trees also houses, depending on the tree species, can also house the xylem. Um, now when the sapwood is active, it's basically holding all of the water and all of the sugars, the glucose and the sucrose that the tree is not using. So this is where you're gonna tap when you wanna find maple syrup from maple trees or any sort of sap from any tree is gonna be stored in the sapwood. Now the sapwood is also kind of a hindrance for the tree. It can, what cre it can create what causes fungal infections or bacterial infections inside of the tree because of the sugar and moisture that is stored there. Now our final layer here in the very, very middle, this is what is known as the heartwood. So the heartwood is the very first thing that is born from a, from a tree seed. So it might be an acorn, might be a pine cone. It's the very first thing that grows. Once the heartwood develops its first layer of outer bark, it then dies. And as you can see, over time, that, that death will turn into decay and turn into soil. 
Now that soil, because it's coming straight from the tree, is very phosphorus rich, very nitrogen, very hydrogen rich soil. So basically the reason it dies is all of those nutrients are stored in that soil. So in years of droughts or in years of low nutrients for an area, a tree can tap into its heartwood and gain some of those crucial nutrients that it needed in a tough year. All right, guys, hope you all enjoyed that and learned a little something. Again, this is just a quick scrape on the surface. So if you are interested in anything about our big, wonderful friends here, then please, please go do your own research. There's so much to learn about plant life.